So given this relation, sine of x plus cosine of y equals 1 half, we're given two tangent lines, line blue, line red, and we want to find the coordinates of point Q. So we have to relate what we're given, right? We know that the two lines are perpendicular, okay? So perpendicular means it deals with the slope. The slopes are perpendicular. How do you find the slope? Well, you're given the two tangent lines, so you have to use the derivative there. And when you take the derivative, you need to plug in the actual points of P or Q to find what the slopes are. So our strategy is to find the point of P. So in other words, the coordinates of point P. We know that point P has an x value of zero because it's on the y axis. And I can figure out what the y value is by plugging into sine of x plus cosine of y equals 1 half. x is 0. So sine of 0 is 0. So we're left with cosine of 0 is 1 half. So if I solve for y, I either get pi over 3 or 2 pi over 3. Actually, there's infinite number of solutions, but you have to use common sense here. And notice that 2 pi over 3 is all the way up here. So it makes sense for p to be pi over 3. So I'm going to get rid of uh, 2 pi over 3. The next thing is I want to find the derivative because now I have the point and I can find the slope by taking the derivative. So for the derivative we're going to use implicit differentiation. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of y is negative sine of y dy dx, and that's going to equal to 0, since the derivative of 1 half is 0. I'm going to solve for dy over dx to get cosine of x over sine of y. And now I can plug in p to find the slope of that line. So x is 0, y is pi over 3, and we end up with 2 over root 3. So the slope of the blue line is 2 over root 3. That means the slope of the red line is negative root 3 over 2. Because they're perpendicular, opposite reciprocal. Okay. So now, again, keep in mind, I want to find the coordinates of Q. So I know the slope. So I'm going to set the derivative. So in other words, cosine of x over sine of y equal to the slope of line Q which we found is negative root 3 over 2. Multiply the sine of y to the right side, and then square both sides. And here I'm going to make a substitution. I know that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So I have that. And I'm going to solve for cosine squared y. So cosine squared y will be 1 minus 4 thirds cosine squared x. And the idea is that the relation is sine of x plus cosine of y equals 1 half. So I'm going to solve for cosine of y. And that will be plus or minus the square root of that. And I'm just going to leave it plus or minus. I don't, I'm not really concerned about whether it should be plus or minus. So. Now I'm going to substitute what I found for cosine y into the sine of x plus cosine of y equation. I'm going to move the 1 half to the left and throw the square root to the other side. And I'm going to square both sides. So like I said before, I don't care if the square root is plus or minus because once you square it, it's just going to become positive. So the left side becomes sine squared minus sine of x plus 1 fourth. And that's equal to 1 minus 4 thirds cosine squared. Cosine squared I can rewrite it as 1 minus sine squared. Because the idea here is I want my entire equation to only depend on sine of x. I don't want to have sine of x and cosine of x. So I make the substitution. I simplify down to negative 1 third sine squared minus sine of x plus 7 over 12 equal to 0. And I end up with x equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, so here I want to use um, common sense. So 
I'm given 7 pi over 6 is over here. 5 pi over 6 is very close to 7 pi over 6. So it'll be somewhere over here. Versus pi over 6 is all the way over here. Okay. So it makes sense to use 5 pi over 6. And so I have x is equal to 5 pi over 6. I can plug it into sine of x plus cosine of y equals 1 half. I get cosine of y is 0. So my choices are either y is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Well, if it's 3 pi over 2, that would be above 2 pi over 3. Right? Versus pi over 2 would be less than 2 pi over 3 by a little bit. So it obviously, it makes sense that it's got to be pi over 2. And so we combine it together and we get that the coordinates for Q are 5 pi over 6 and pi over 2. And that is our final answer.